Well, good morning to you, lovely ladies and gentlemen. Steve Collins coming to you from beautiful, cloudy San Antonio, Texas, the second most powerful, passionate, purposeful coach and speaker in the world. I love this quote from my mentor, Zig Ziglar, and happy Monday to you. This quote is uh, very powerful when you think about it, and I have been electing to do a series of videos that have to do with simple subjects that we just take for granted. So I would like to share this simple subject with you this morning, okay? There are no traffic jams on the extra mile. There are no traffic jams on the extra mile. I want to share this with you because, you know, the challenge with phrases that are actually principles or truths is that if you've heard them throughout your life, maybe you heard them when you were younger, and they did not have an impact on you at that time, but maybe they were seeds planted for when you became an adult, like today. If you're an adult watching this, I know a lot of people let their children watch these videos to give them something to think about bigger. Good for you for doing that. It's a blessing for them. These are seeds that are planted. But you cannot become one of these people that forsakes the simplicity of these simple principles that it is easy to forsake. It's very easy to forsake simple principles. Everybody thinks there's some mystical, magical, complicated, hard to discover thing to excel in their life or to achieve great goals. The truth of the matter is, it's not that complicated and it's not that hard to achieve. It really isn't. The difficulty is in committing to the daily actions required once the feeling of excitement has left you. Now you are in a situation to enter the arena of champions. You see, the arena of the mediocre masses is this. I do it as long as it's fun. I do it as long as it feels good. I do it as long as I'm somewhat interested. I do it as long as it's easy. You see, the championship arena is built on those who do not allow their feelings to be the catalyst for taking continuous action. Their commitment is what helps them to move into action. They say, I don't care how I feel, I'm committed to this. I don't care what I feel, I'm committed to this. I don't care what I feel, I'm committed to this. When your decisions to take action are based on your commitments and not on your feelings, you're entering the realm of champions. So there is no traffic jam on the extra mile. What, my friend, is the extra mile? Let me give you a little bit of historical balance and understanding behind this that will really bring it to light for you that do not yet know where this came from. So in the old days in ancient Israel, in Jesus' time, when the Roman government had taken over the area and the land and they were on full conquest to push the Roman Empire to the far reaches of the earth, one of the laws, a law, it was a law of the land, a law of the land in ancient Israel was this. If you, an Israelite, a Jewish person, a person living in any of these regions, let's say was out working the field, or you were a blacksmith working on metal, or let's say that you were a gardener, or let's say that you were a carpenter. If a Roman soldier who was carrying their 80 to 100 pound rucksack happened to see you on their journey, they could stop you and say, hey, you, pick up my sack and carry it for the mile you were required by law to stop what you were doing in that moment. You had to stop what you were doing and you were forced by the government to pick up that soldier's rucksack and carry it for him for one mile. It was a legal requirement. You must carry it for one mile. You see, when Jesus came around, he had a different conversation about setting the example. And he said this, yeah, the law requires you to do a mile, but I charge you and challenge you, go an extra mile. Go the extra mile. This is from Jesus, y'all. What? Can you imagine the horror and the shock of the Israelites? Hey, this government is trying to attack us. This government is against us. This government is trying to shut us down. This government is intruding on our land and our ways. This is crazy. And you want 
me not only to stop what I'm doing, to obey the law, to carry their stuff for a mile. You want me to go an extra mile? Yes. Why do you think he would say that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I offer this suggestion based on my research and study because it required the man or woman of faith to have humility. It required them to have a servant's heart. It required them to change their attitude from doing just enough to get by. Do you know anybody like that? They do just enough to get by. They're not playing to win. They're playing not to lose, doing just enough to get by. Well, that's not my job. Well, don't expect that of me. Well, don't expect this of me. This is all I have to do. This is all they're paying me to do. Do you know anybody like that that does just enough? Well, it would require the man or woman of faith to step out from their attitude of frustration, maybe anger, maybe being really upset or inconvenienced, and it forces them into a different state of mind, a state of service, a state of servant leadership through example. Can you imagine, if you will, go with me in the theater of your mind, the Roman soldier at the end of the mile saying, fine Jew, drop the bag. And the man or woman of faith saying, no sir, I'll carry it an extra mile for you. I'm gonna carry it one more mile for you. You don't have to worry about it, I got you. Can you imagine what must have gone on in the mind of the Roman soldier who knew they despised the Jewish people, they didn't care about them, they had their own agenda. When someone required by the law to carry that said, I'll take it an extra mile. What do you think not only did that do for the person carrying the extra mile, how do you think that affected the Roman soldier? You see, there's a lot of power when you serve your enemies. There's a lot of power when you bless your enemies. There's a lot of power when you do good to those who do harm to you. You see, there was lessons for both persons in this equation. Imagine if three of the other soldiers had people who were not followers of Christ that dropped those sacks and started cursing as they headed back. And they're like, hey, what the heck's going on over there? Why is, why, what's happening over there? Why is he carrying you? I don't know, man. He said he wanted to carry it an extra mile. What the hell is he talking about carrying an extra mile? Why would he want to do that? He says he's a follower of a guy named Jesus. And Jesus instructed him to do this. Do you think that might have opened up a conversation around faith? A conversation around service? A conversation around dying to oneself and honoring one above the other, even knowing that this person is an enemy going the extra mile? going the extra mile. So in the Jewish times, in summary, what would happen is the Roman soldiers going through the town could see a Jewish person or any person in that region working and the law required them to say, take my sack and carry it for me. And they had to carry it one mile, but Jesus instructed them, I charge you, go the extra mile. Do more than is expected of you. Do more than the bare minimum. It changed the heart of the one carrying the sack to that of service and looking outward and possibly even compassion. And it changed the heart of the one who was being served because it just made no sense. Why would an enemy of the Roman government choose to do this? And it demonstrated their faith in Jesus. It demonstrated their commitment and their loyalty to the faith to serve. Do you know the church is the only institution on earth that exists for the benefit of its non-members? <laughs> I'll let you play that back when you get it one more time. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen, the extra mile. Do you go the extra mile? What is the extra mile in this current day and age? In your marriage, do you do just enough to not get a divorce, just enough to get along okay? Or do you go the extra mile like you did maybe when you were courting? Do you do above and beyond what is expected to you with your children? Do you do just enough to not have to suffer negative consequences? Or do you go the extra mile? Do you go further than what you would normally go? Do you take it a step further than you would normally go? Do you do just enough in your business, just enough in your job, just enough to get by? You know what my mentor Zig Ziglar said that I love? He said, when you do more than you're paid to do, ultimately you will be paid more for what you do. Let me say that one more time. When you do more than you're paid to do, you will eventually be paid more for what you do. How could that be, 
Steve Collins. I'm so glad you asked inquiring minds that want to know because those in leadership who understand servant leadership and understand a spirit of excellence that cannot be trained. Oh, sure, the tasks can be trained, but a spirit of excellence cannot. A spirit of perseverance cannot. That's something that someone carries with them when they see that in an employee who's going above and beyond the extra mile. They make note of them and say, this person deserves a promotion and you have the opportunity to grow into what up Hank? you have the opportunity to grow into something greater than yourself because instead of being the one who says well that's not my job I'm just gonna do what I'm supposed to do follow the wise words of my mentor Zig Ziglar when you do more than you're paid to do eventually you'll be paid more for what you do because you'll be recognized as a person who goes the extra mile do you go the extra mile with your husband or wife do you go the extra mile with your children do you go the extra mile in your work do you go the extra mile in your business or do you do just enough to get by ladies and gentlemen there are no traffic jams on the extra mile Zig Ziglar would say and you want to know why because the extra mile requires a servant's heart the extra mile requires you to think more about somebody else than about yourself the extra mile requires you to be locked in and engaged into serving another person that's why there's no traffic jams on the extra mile you want to know something fabulous servants tend to be more fulfilled than takers. Givers tend to be more fulfilled than takers. Jesus himself said it, red letters in the Bible, it's more blessed to give than receive, but you'll never know that if you don't intentionally determine to serve. Are you going the extra mile? Are you playing to win or are you playing not to lose and doing just enough to get by? If you don't know, I suggest you consider it today. It could be the difference between being a champion, being victorious and living a fulfilled life or simply being a gerbil on the little hamster wheel, spinning round and round with nowhere to go. I hope today you choose to go the extra mile. Have a great day, guys.